you're allowing a lot to slide, but but Clay, you, you're you're driving the hard line. I well, I'm perplexed there because I want to know more. Well, it's funny because uh, <laughs> do you get where I'm going? Uh, well, last week I mentioned that I'm afraid that if Clay leaves, there could be some nuggets here that gets revealed, and you get these pieces where Clay this and Clay that, and it makes a player look bad or it makes the organization look bad. That's what I worry about in these situations. It doesn't have to it could be an amicable split up. Hey, Clay Walk, thank you for the services. This is business. This is pro sports. We've seen it before. But what bothers me is all of a sudden we're starting talking attitude and this and that. How's his attitude when he accepted the bench roll reluctantly, went out there against Utah, lit their ass up for like a 20-point half, talked to Fit Tabuki at halftime, and was like, you know what? This bench thing didn't talk to us. Said This bench thing ain't that bad. I get to read the game, and I'm cool. And we didn't hear a peep about Clay when he went to the bench. And that was right before the All-Star game. The rest of the season, I think we all will admit, was he fine the rest of the season? I thought he had some poor body language the last couple of years. I'm I talking don't think about it's the from, end of all. From the All-Star, all. I asked from the All-Star break, okay. but everybody bitched and moaned uh -huh. about going to the bench. Yeah. And he went to the bench the day before the All-Star break. The last game before the All-Star break, he went to the bench, had a 20-point half or whatnot. Mm -hmm. He was lighting it up. Then he joined us the next week on post game. was like, look, I like the bench. I get to read the game. It's all. It's actually not that bad. Did we hear anything about his attitude from the All Star break on through the rest of the season? I, not that I know of, but I also don't hear know anything. what happened prior or the year we before. We didn't hear anything. I, that's my whole point: is that he accepted his role. He came off the bench, played very well off the bench, looked reinvigorated. Then why are they then, saying? Then why are they saying otherwise? What Why is mean? the messaging well, no, feels because, like it's different? Well, because this is how it always happens. In the, it's all leverage. Yeah, but when Dante DiVincenzo leverage. left, they didn't talk about... It's all leverage. He didn't it? have an attitude. Oh. DiVincenzo wouldn't have an attitude, Look. although I do know that he sulked a little bit because GP2 came mm -hmm. and kind of took his minutes. And mm -hmm. yeah, there was some whispers that, yeah, DiVincenzo's not happy. He also wasn't of the... You know, Q rating or recognition exactly. of someone like Clay Thompson. Exactly. But and we hyper focus on Clay Bonte, because he's I, Clay. I think we're afraid. Like, I'm not you. I'm just saying, I think most people are afraid. His body language hasn't been great the last couple of years. And yeah, okay, toward the end, he accepted it. But I do feel like a big part, and there's many things, there's many, many things, but many things. But a big part of the last couple of years has been just, just the Clay aura, you know, Clay not practicing or whatever and taking some poor shots, them having to sit them down, yada, yada, yada. Like there's, there's a lot of clay stuff. And so I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. He might be perfect behind the scenes, but yeah. when they are saying to us like, Hey, he's got to accept certain things. Like I'm listening to what they're saying. And I'm thinking, man, what are they not telling me that that's playing a part of why they're driving a hard line with clay Thompson? Well, they also realize that they're a lot older. And when you have a team down the street it's from true. the San Francisco Giants that basically gave the Brandon's loyalty contracts, it sets you back. The Giants are still a below 500 team, and those contracts they gave all those guys set them back. So the Warriors, they've talked, you know, Jed York has talked to Joe Lacob and Bob Myers will talk to John Lynch and hang out with John Lynch. You know, Steve Kerr hanging out with Shanahan. And all these managers and coaches, they know each other and they hang out. The thing is, you don't want to end up like the Giants. That is looming. And if you're the Warriors in this situation, yeah, it's painful. Trust me, one of the members of the big three potentially moving on. But you may be better for it right now and it's because you're at a crossroads. You, you can't just give Clay 20 to $25 million a year and say, let's run it back yeah. and you finish in fifth place. The league is going in a different direction. Well, so let me... This is thrown at me, um, and I, I'm curious on this one. Like, as I'm listening to you, you're saying, like, the bench roll. Would he be okay with a bench roll here if there were a starting job available? All the things were, all the variables were the same in terms of finances and years. Would he accept a bench roll here if a starting role elsewhere were available? Not sure if he does, because this is what's going to happen. Comes off the bench. And we know Steve Kerr, he's not afraid to change the lineups. He's not fixated on a specific five. We saw 28 different starting lineups last season with the Golden State Warriors. Could be wrong. Could be 29. Pajemski and Moody say they start in this hypothetical, and Clay signs to come off the bench. And Paz just don't have it. He's going through a sophomore slump. Then you ask Clay to start again. Then what? 
I don't know. You then see how it goes? Just, <laughs> I mean, then we're right back in the same situation we were this season, and we're having the same exact conversation. Clay's not a starter, but yet Pajemski's struggling. Moody, Clay's not a starter, but yet Moody's struggling. You get what I'm saying? So you're and saying they just gonna, need to remove that I, I, from I, the equation. I'm, I, I'm, I've been in the camp for the last month and a half, especially after Clay, and we're going to we're have Anthony Slater on later in the week, and he chronicled this. That last press with Clay Thompson – it felt like it was his last presser as a member to go to State Warriors. I felt like that from that moment. I, just, I almost feel like both sides just need a clean start. Warriors move on in this direction, in another direction, and Clay moves on in another direction. doesn't have to be nasty. Business is business. Hey, man, we decided to make a decision. This is a tough decision. It's going to be a PR nightmare because all the Clay Thompson fans are going to be like, really, you couldn't keep Clay Thompson? And then it puts more pressure on Draymond Green to be a good basketball player, not only be a good basketball player, but to stay on the floor. Then it puts more pressure on Stephen Curry to produce at the level he was producing at as a 25-year-old. And now he's 36, going to be 37. You let this, So you got to be ready for the backlash. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if Clay accepts a role here off the bench when he's like, he's probably thinking I'm better than Pods and Moody. Yeah, but, you may not believe that, what? but he's going to believe that. No, I get that, but like you also, but this goes back to like when we talk about you know just attitude in general, like having the big picture view and and understanding that what's best for you um, might not be best for the team, and what's best for the team might be you taking a smaller you know or a different role, and like that's that was the beauty of Iguodala, right? The beauty of Iguodala was whether he liked it or not, he somehow came to peace with him changing his role up, and it really made them a dynastic. Can I ask why? And this is I'm very curious. Can I ask why? I get Iguodala took that role, mm -hmm. and it was reluctantly uh -huh. he took the role, but he ended up taking it, and he flourished in it. Yeah. And it was the right move. Why does Clay Thompson not get the credit for, I know it was reluctant, but he did come off the bench. And when you hear a peep the rest of the season, why doesn't he get that benefit of the doubt? Clay Thompson. What, what benefit of the doubt? He did benefit it for a week. Doubt. You no, he did it for 14 games. And the okay. reason why he got put back in the starting line is because guys got hurt. Okay. And guys struggled. But he said, I'll do whatever I got to do for the team. He doesn't I just, get any credit I don't, I don't, for that. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. About I'm just credit. asking a question. I don't. I don't. You know, I'm just like Lubbock. He came off the bench for 14 games. We all say we could come off the bench. Come on, everybody's crying about Clay. Come, and that wasn't even the biggest issue. We could shoot 25 percent for three, 13 points. But anyway, Clay went to the bench. Yeah. Well, I think to your point though, it's for 14 games. It was nice, but we didn't really have we didn't really have that chance to see him come off the bench for a long period of time like Andre Godala did, like we just saw Chris Paul did. Of course, they didn't really make a big stink out of the time. I think it's not so much was the issue him coming off the bench. It's you got to just pick one or the other. When you're yo-yoing him back and forth uh, in that situation, but, that becomes a very difficult so, situation for Clay to stay in. So, so why did they yo-yo him? Well, maybe I would the, the question I would then throw at you in at you is, if the Warriors could commit to keeping him on the bench no matter what, through the Pajemski struggles, through the Moody struggles, and just no matter what, keep him on the bench... Does that is that a more clear cut role for him that he'd be willing to accept rather than having to deal with the the possibility of yo yoing back and forth between starter and bench role? Yeah, well, you may have to yo yo him. And Steve Kerr doesn't. The, the one thing we've learned about Steve Kerr throughout his entire tenure, he's not afraid to shake it up. If you're struggling on his team, and there's not a clear cut starter, and Kerr will go back to what he knows best. I'm starting Clay. <laughs> I'm starting Clay. That's what he's doing. So I don't know if he accepts that role. So to your point, yeah, we need to see a small, large sample size because guys started getting hurt and started struggling. Well, then you're trying to fight for a become on spot. Kerr kind of to kind of course correct in his own his cool. own way where, you know, Steve Kerr, he's going to go with what he knows works. But maybe there's a little bit of Steve Kerr that needs to adapt to what works with this current well, roster right now. Yes, in the past, Clay was your guy. You can always go to him to bail you out of tough right. tough situations. But you need to react to the team you have in front of you right now. Okay. And I don't know if Steve can really have that old way of thinking with this, you know, new era of Warriors basketball that we're transitioning into. You know, how much adjustment does Steve Kerr need to do going forward with this current team well, if Clay is to stay on the roster? Well, I'm looking at Clay's game logs here. And there's a lot of game logs where it says 25, 26, 24, 28 minutes. So they kept the minutes down. But why did he go back into the starting lineup? Well, they weren't one, good. They weren't good, number one. They're fighting for a playoff spot. 
right? Number two, they tried to make this push for the six seed that fell flat on their face. But guys started struggling. So they kind of had to go back to it, but it started to light up. I'm sure they didn't want to. And Clay was probably like, dude, what's my role here? What's my role? What's my role? Well, I, I think that for whatever reason, you know, there's a um, metaphoric significance of if I'm going to the bench, then – I'm not one of the top dogs on this team, and there's the freedom that goes along with right. that in terms of, you know, and the status and all those things. I just think it's really difficult. He's in a really difficult spot here. He's 35 years old, you know? Also, I think he's, you know, I think he's a student of the game. He's seen, you know, he, he's mentioned Manu Ginobili before, and so many graces come off the bench. I I don't I don't know. Uh, you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ, FM, and AC1 San Francisco, and Odyssey Sports Station. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Don't forget, you can also watch us every single day on our YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter streams. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union for a low rate all alone. Apply online or just ask for First NorCal financing at the dealer. Charlie in New York. Charlie, what's happening? You're on the roast. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, you basically took all the words out of my mouth. I, 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 think, uh, I think with this Warriors team... I think Clay and I'm going to throw Wiggins in there more so. They both need to change the scenery. I, I just I think if you I think Clay has I think if he stays and he agrees to the six man role, I I just think there'll be too much friction going into the year and throughout the season. Um, I so I think uh, I think it would be best for both parties to part ways. And and the Warriors really need to change direction of how they construct this team going forward. How they do it, whether they get Brandon Ingram or uh, I love the idea of Zion. Well, who knows? But I think there's certain players on this roster you just need to just move on from. And uh, and, and and like I said, Wiggins is another one. I think Wig and, and you're going to be getting pennies on the dollar for him, unfortunately, because he's he's had two bad years. Uh, but I think they would be better off with whatever you can get in some package for him. Or I, I, I don't. I wouldn't even know how you would uh, move uh, Wiggins. What would it have to take? But um, yeah, I, I, I just, I just think this team needs a facelift, and and that would unfortunately, I think that would be without Clay, without Wiggins, and 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 some of these other pieces, and they need to start. Uh, Focusing on, they got to change with the times. They're not. They're, they're, yeah. They seem reluctant yeah. to change with the times, well, the, and they're falling behind now. Yeah. Anyway, that's no, all I got, guys. I'll good keep call, listening. Charlie. Good call, Charlie. And maybe they do realize that they have fallen behind, and that's why that facelift is coming for the Golden State Warriors. It is fascinating, though. We talk about Andrew Wiggins. I remember being at uh, Buon Vino, Walnut Creek, and we we're fighting like, no, I'm not trading Andrew Wiggins and putting him in the package for Jalen Brown. <laughs> And two years later, Jalen Brown is hoisting the Bill Russell Finals MVP award. And we're talking about getting pennies on a dollar for Andrew Wiggins in just two years. And I even before this season, I was talking to a, a member of the Golden State Warriors. I won't say who. They were laughing, basically laughing at the fact that Jalen Brown got $60 million a year. It's like we got Andrew Wiggins. And you know what? I was okay with that because I thought, man, Wiggins, Jordan Poole, Kamiga, I would never do that deal. Now Poole's in D.C. Eesh. Wiggins is averaging 13 points a game, and we're debating whether or not you want to pay Kamiga $30 million a year. Damn, life comes even, at you fast. We haven't even gotten to that portion of the offseason. <laughs> but, I will, but I will say this, like, yeah, things do... They they changed dramatically. I mean, Freddie Sanchez was a you know batting champ and World Series champion and out of baseball in in a year. Uh, basketball though, with this team, Jordan Poole. I mean, I thought he was like. There's no way in my mind I didn't see the next five years with Jordan Poole on the Warriors. Oh my god! And then immediately just gone, just wiped off the map, sent to Washington into witness protection. Andrew Wiggins, the greatest two months of his life. And ever since then, it's been just an absolute wow. nightmare. Wow. I can't. I, Kevon Looney, too. Like, Kevon well, Looney, I thought, wow, I can't see Kevon Looney ever putting well, on another jersey but the Warriors. Well, $3 million of Kevon Looney's $8 million is currently guaranteed for next season. The other, the $5 million, right now, three is guaranteed. The other five will be guaranteed by Monday, uh, which is today. So, 
Could he be released or will he be part of a package? Uh, who knows what's going to happen with the Warriors. And he's a trusted voice in that locker room. Steve Kerr's mentioned yeah, it. Leader. We know what he means in that locker room, yeah. man. There's a leadership void. There's a spot for Looney on almost every team. Absolutely, especially a contender. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I don't really want to lose it. He had a poor year, though. Like, and to you, Steiny, yeah. he had a lousy year. And I love the guy. More coming up. Richard Royer, as we talk about one franchise and another short Speaking of lousy, the Giants. <clears throat> Richie. Rich Aurelia. Your favorite shortstop. He's going to join us. <laughs> I don't see an insight with the Giants, man. I really don't. This is coming.